bugs, and bicycles. What do cockroaches and competitions have to do with being successful? Stay tuned. In 1898, a psychologist Norman Triplett published a paper called The Dynamogenic Factors in Pacemaking and Competition in the fairly new Journal of American Psychology. This paper has been cited over 1,700 times as one of the earliest social psychology experiments. You see, Triplett had noticed a pattern in data from three different types of races. They had races where you try to just beat your best previous time, where you race by yourself against the clock. They had races in which you raced against your own time, but there was another bicycle that was keeping pace with you, that was staying at your speed. And then there was a third type of race, which was what we usually think of as a race where you compete with others. Now, what he noticed was that when you race against someone else, you get faster racing times than if you race against the clock alone. And this seemed to be extremely consistent among different cyclists. Now, it wasn't clear why this happened, and so he wanted to do an experiment to see if he could get the same result in a different situation. So he did another experiment that included people of all ages, including children. And he had this apparatus that was much like a, the reel on a fishing line where you had a line that you would reel in. And it was a Y-shaped apparatus so that one or two people could sit down and operate this thing. So people would sit either by themselves or with a competitor, and they would try to reel in the line as fast as they could. Each person did multiple trials alone or against a competitor. Now, the results were kind of interesting. For some people, he observed that they consistently performed better when they're paired against another person, just like in the bicycle situation. But oddly enough, some people seemed to suffer from having the other person there and performed consistently worse. In other words, for some people, they got what would later be called social facilitation and enhancement of behavior, Others got social inhibition. Okay, so this was really puzzling. Why would some people react to competition in a way that helped them and others in a way that hurt them? And for the next 50 or 60 years, there were all kinds of questions raised about what conditions produce facilitation and which conditions produce inhibition and why. Now, one of the most popular explanations of inhibition was that the people knew that they were being watched, and if that's the case, then people fear being judged. And because they're sitting there thinking and worrying about being judged, that causes interference with their ability to focus on the task, it distracts them, and you get poorer performance. In the 1960s, a researcher named Robert Science had a hypothesis about why this was the case. He had noticed that easy tasks tend to result in facilitation, but difficult tasks or novel tasks that the participant was unfamiliar with tended to result in inhibition. And he had a suspicion that maybe it was just simply arousal that explained the difference. Having other people around tends to generate a general sense of arousal which might spill over into your behavior in other settings. So in 1969, Zions and his colleagues published one of my favorite ever social psychology experiments. The title of that paper was Social Enhancement and Impairment of Performance in the Cockroach. And that was published in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. Now in their study, they had two tasks. They had an easy task, at least for cockroaches, which is to just simply run down a runway. So the roach just has to start in one area and run and get to another area. A difficult task for a cockroach is to make a turn. So the cockroach had to run and then in the middle of the maze, turn left or right. Now they gave the cockroaches two audience conditions. One in which they ran the maze alone and another in which they put little boxes with other roaches in the arena. 
So the question is, do you get facilitation when there's an audience or inhibition in these two different kinds of tasks? Now, what they saw was that in the easy task, where they just had to run a straight line, they observed facilitation. On the other hand, in the difficult task, when the roach had to make a left turn, they saw inhibition. So in this case, task difficulty predicted whether or not you would get inhibition or facilitation when in the presence of others. Now, I hope we can all agree that this was not due to the roaches being afraid of being judged by their other roaches. Roaches aren't that judgmental after all. And that arousal is the most reasonable explanation for the data they observed. So those are fun experiments, bicycles and cockroaches, but how does that help us with our daily lives? What use is it? Well, the lesson here is that if you need to perform in public, right, whether it be a school presentation, maybe it's sports, uh, maybe you're performing in a music concert, maybe you're going to a job interview, whatever it is, you can make the task easier by practicing and being ready for it. That way, the arousal that you get is on your side, and you're more likely to get social facilitation than inhibition. Thanks for watching, everybody. And until next time, keep thinking. Hey, you know what's fun? Pushing buttons. So why don't you push the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, help us grow our channel so we can get the word out and help as many people as possible. Thanks.